The CHR is currently focused on three areas of research that we believe will expand not only our basic knowledge about the causes of infertility, but should give us some insight into uh, therapeutic strategies for how to manage these particular forms of infertility disorders. The first, I would say, has to do with the immune system. The immune system appears to be mediating diseases of the reproductive tract that are in fact the primary cause of infertility. A very good example of this has, has been discovered here, which suggests that inflammation in the uterus, a very low grade type of inflammation, may create a hostile environment so that even though we can collect eggs from patients, we can make embryos, we can transfer them back, these patients very often undergo what we call recurrent pregnancy loss or miscarriages. And at, at the heart of this, not only the CHR, but other laboratories are now pursuing the possibility that the reason these pregnancies fail is because there has been an immune reaction to the embryo itself. So the immune, the immunology of this is actually translated into real treatment paradigms for these patients, such that many of our patients receive prior um, anti-immune medications or medications that will suppress the immune system. And the data that's coming out of the studies here is beginning to suggest that if we do suppress the immune system, the chances to pregnancy may in fact be improved. The ovary is unique as an endocrine organ. It secretes powerful and, and numerous hormones, hormones that are steroid hormones, peptide hormones, and various other things. And, and what the CHR, the, basically the physicians at the CHR have uncovered, is that the pattern of hormones that are secreted by the ovary is influenced by genetic background, but very much influenced by the age of the patient. And this has led to the identification of a very specific hormonal pathway having to do with the synthesis of the steroid hormones and a deficiency has been identified in the ovaries of older women that can to some extent be rectified again by dietary supplements. So the ongoing studies here are really aimed at refining the way we think about this problem, understanding the basic mechanisms uh, as to what's changing in the ovary as a woman ages, but most importantly, how can we begin to take this new knowledge and translate that into a sensible and safe form of therapy to increase a woman's reproductive potential.